How you Hello. doing, all right? How you doing? Welcome back to, uh, to the D1500 for the, for the DSA. Um, so last time, in the last video, you saw us um, just about to release the mold, and there's some videos of the mold being released. So now we've got it released and we've moved it into the two different sheds. Um, we've actually got some parts made that we infused this week. Um, so where we are with it, this is the outboard side of one of the hulls. Uh, the other one's the other side of the shed and then the wet deck and the inboard of the hulls are in another shed already been infused. So they're, they're, they're at a slightly, slightly more advanced stage than this. So how we got to this stage is um, we, we obviously released the hull. We did, a, we did a release agent over the whole boat, to, over the whole new mold to get a nice, really nice shiny surface. Um, so we've got, a, got an excellent mold finish on this uh, and a really good release agent. And I, when I say really good, it is really it's good. A, it's the um, Chemtrend uh, so three-part release agent. So it's a, a cleaner, a primer, and a sealer. So after we we finished that uh, that release agent process, um, we we started doing a gel and skin. So in this boat, we've used Scott Bader's LS31 gel coat in white, which is a really good product um, used by a lot of boat builders. Brilliant, brilliant gel coat. Um, We've used the 65 PA as a clear, so all our boats are clear under the waterline. Gives us, gives us a good visual inspection um, when we've infused to know that we're really 100% certain that we've got a really good infusion. So that's, um, that's where we are with that. After that, we, we skinned it. And again, we use um, Scott Bader's 690 VE resin for skinning. This is, again, like we said on the, on the tooling, it's just a really good low shrinkage resin so you end up with a really nice part out of the out of the job. You get no, you get very little print through, and it just controls the process a lot more. Um, it also is is much better at bonding to the the VE six seven nine oh three that we use for the infusion that Dan's going to talk about in a minute. Um, then we laid up to our our basic laminate, which is which is sort of a, a glass before the core. Then we're using a diab um, core kit here. Uh, really good advanced core kit, um, very pleased with it. It's the first go in this hull and actually most things fitted really well. Um, so big thanks to Dyer for getting a good job on that. Um, yeah, it fits really nicely. We've then obviously got another layer of glass plus extras over, over different places. A few carbon reinforcements where we, where we require them, um, like chain plate extras. Um, and you can see there's a few little details like dagger board, um, monolithic areas that are around, around the hull. So a few little extras going on um, for us to get our structure up. Um, so yeah, basically that is, that's where we go from there. And then afterwards we move on to the infusion process that Dan's gonna talk about. So the challenging part we have now is how we can get all the resin to all the areas that we need, especially in our high laminate areas, as Brendan explained. Um, and as you can see on the job, there's a various different components. So you've got things like, this is called shrouded resin spiral. Um, and this is for what we pump the resin into the spiral, which then distrib distributes it down the job. So these spirals run the full length of the job in sections. So we start in the middle and we shoot the resin in and it pumps across. And every time we get to the next resin spiral, we turn the next spiral on. So we're generally shooting something around five to 700 mil distance, um, just to ensure that we're getting the resin to where we need, whilst it's also being curing and going off on us. Um, we've also got, as you can see in front of you here, we've got resin transfer. So this is a, a mesh that can be put down on monolithic areas. Monolithic means anywhere where you've got no core material that can support the flow of the resin. So this just allows the resin to flow between the bag and the material. We've then had to put castles in position. So we call them resin castles where the resin, the pipes plumb in. Um, and all this has to be done before we apply the blue vacuum bag. Um, the next challenge after we've got all the layout planned is to apply the vacuum bag. We then have to draw as much air out the vacuum bag as possible and reach some parameters that we set ourselves um, to ensure that there's a minimal amount of air that's going to be left in the job whilst we're infusing. We vacuum bag it out. We leave it under vacuum for around three to four hours to make sure that the bag is stable and we're not going to have any issues. To do that, we have plumbed pipe work through the bag, which then goes into the catch pot. Just in case any resin does get sucked out during the vacuum infusion process, the catch pot can collect it before it reaches our vacuum pump. This then in turn goes back to a big vacuum pump that we've got outside 
which has the, the ability to pull the bag down to the levels that we need. Once we're happy and comfortable with the bag level and all the drop tests that we've done, we then use a SideJet One machine, which is supplied by Side Composite Integration. So this machine is a, a very good product to use. It makes the whole infusion process safer because we're not mixing and handling the chemicals. So it pumps the resin from the IBC and the catalyst from its separate container and mixes it in a mixing head on top of the machine. And whilst we're using the machine, we can set the speed it pumps it, the pressure it pumps it in, and it gives us a lot of feedback on what's actually going on in the vacuum bag. It's got graphs and all sorts of things we can use to see what's actually going on in there whilst we're infusing. So really good product for us to use. This, is, this makes life so much easier where we can just set the machine up pumping, we can focus on looking after the vacuum bag whilst the infusion is being carried out. So as I explained, the resin and catalyst is mixed at the head. It then comes down through the pipe work into a, a homemade manifold. Um, we call it manifold, which then feeds, as I explained earlier, all the resin castles. So this directs the resin to where we want it to start with. So as you can see, we've got one mid, two mid and forward. So we know that we can open up the number one, the resin flows across, then we know when it reaches number two, we know exactly which taps to open, so there's no confusion. Because if what we've got to ensure that happens is we don't get any air lock out within the job. So making sure that we open the right taps at the right time is absolutely critical. Because if you create an airlock and the resin goes around, there's nowhere for the air to go once the resin's within the job. So it's absolutely important that something like this is labelled up and very clear for use. All right. Once we've infused it in, we ensure that the resin has reached all the edges and pumped up nice and clear. And then we leave it under vacuum for around about two days before we debag it, just to make sure that it's nice and cured and it's going to hold its shape. Um, and and these, all these products are supplied by a company called AirTech. Um, everything, the bag, the pipes, the castles, the flow mesh, all comes from one place, which is quite si nice and simple because then it all goes together and all fits together nicely. Even all the taps and the T-fittings come from AirTech. Uh, very good parts and, uh, and uh, very reliable. So, um, And obviously one of the things that's absolutely critical for this whole process is temperature. You've got to make sure that the resin's the right temperature. You've got to make sure that the, the motor itself's the right temperature, the ambient temperature, even the humidity has got to be at a good level. So this is, tell me about it. So this is the, the, other, at the, the other side of the hole, the outboard, which we've now debagged after the infusion process, which I've just explained. We haven't quite pulled all the peel ply off yet. Um, peel ply is put down to make sure that any of the, the consumables, like the castles and the resin spar and the flow mesh, can be released off the job afterwards. If we don't put that down first, it will literally bond to the material and be a nightmare to get off. So this peel ply gives us, as you can see, it, it, the name is what it's called. It's literally called peel ply, so it just peels off and leaves a nice surface underneath for us to do secondary bonding and things like that. So at the moment, we're at a stage now where it's all been debagged, pulled off, and we're getting ready to, to stand this mold up, ready for the next process. Um, and obviously due to the, to the very good release agent we're using, we're gonna have some challenges on standing this up and making sure that the part stays within the motor. So lots to think about. Um, it's not as simple as everyone might think, but it's good fun and it keeps us occupied and uh, uh, keeps us active every day. So it's uh, very good. Thank you. Thank you.